Welcome to Electro Online. So now let's find the gravitational potential inside that spherical shell. So we pick any arbitrary point, not at the center, a distance r away from the center. We have a volume element dv, since we're in spherical coordinates, we define that as r squared dr d theta d phi times the sine of theta. And the mass of that dm is simply equal to the density of the material times dv. Now we, of course, we're going to assume uniform density to make it a little bit easier. The distance from the center to the area or to the uh, volume element is going to be r, that's going to be a variable. The distance from our position to that volume element is going to be x, and the distance from our position to the center is going to be capital R. The inside radius of the shell is a, the outside radius is b, and this is the hollow part right here. Using the law of cosine, we can say that x squared is equal to r squared plus capital R squared minus 2r big R cosine of theta. And then here, this here, is the angle theta inside. Now when we take the der derivative of both sides, assuming that little r and big R are constant, we're only going to assume x to be the variable and theta to be the variable. Then you can see you get 2x dx is equal to 2r r sine of theta d theta. The derivative of the cosine is the negative sine that gets rid of this. These are considered constants, so they disappear. And then we're going to write the sine of theta d theta over x as being dx over r times capital R. The reason why we do that is when we define the small amount of gravitational potential caused by our small little dm right here, we can define that as being minus g times dm over x. And since dm is equal to the density times the dv, and the dv is spelled out right here, we can replace that and we get this as our small little contributor or the contributing amount to the gravitational potential. But then we're going to take d theta sine of theta divided by x and replace it by dx over r times capital R. So we end up with uh, dx in the numerator and an r times a capital R in the denominator, but this r cancels out that r. So now we simply have a minus g rho r dr d theta, or I should say d phi dx divided by capital R. And if we then integrate that and integrate this, we should be able to get the gravitational potential caused by all of the mass in the shell for a point inside that spherical shell. Now notice we have three variables, r, phi, and dx. Now phi is rotating all the way around the sphere, 360 degrees. So when we integrate d phi, we go from 0 to 2 pi. So we, we can replace the integral of d phi by simply 2 pi and put outside the integral sign. So this becomes equal to minus 2 pi times the density times the gravitational constant divided by r. And now we have two integrals left. We have r dr and we have the integral of dx. Now we need the limits of integration for dx. So from this position here, the closest, the smallest that x can be when we take this volume element and put it right there would be this distance right here, which would be the variable r minus this distance r right there. So that's the closest approach. So that would be the variable r minus the position vector from where we are to the center of the circle. The largest that x can be is when this volume element is on the other side. So we take the radius r plus the big R right there as our upper limit. So this would be r plus big R. So now we can go ahead and integrate over x, dx, that becomes x. We substitute the upper and the lower limits to get the following. So this is minus 2 pi. And here this becomes the upper limit, which is r plus big R, because when we integrate dx, we get x. We plug in the upper limit, we get r plus r. Minus when we plug in the lower limit, we get r minus r, like this. Now notice that the little r's cancel out, so the variable cancel out, and r minus and minus r becomes 2r. So this is equal to minus 4 pi density g, because we have a 2r here times r divided by r, and then we're going to integrate still r dr. And the r's, the big r's cancel out right here. So now we still have to integrate this, and so we get the following. Let's move up here. 
So now we have minus 4 pi times the density times g times the integral of r dr. So it's a little cleaner right here. But now we need the limits of the variable r. And of course, that will be from the inner radius to the outer radius, which means from a to b. So this becomes equal to minus 4 pi density g. This integrator will become r squared divided by 2, evaluated from a to b. And the 2 and the 4 cancel out, so this becomes minus 2 pi density g times, when we plug in the upper limit, we get b squared. Plug in the lower limit, we get minus a squared. And then you'll find out that when we deal with this, we typically like to have a 4 pi rho g in there. So we're going to multiply this by 2, divide by 2. So this becomes minus 4 pi rho g times the quantity b squared over 2 minus a squared over 2. Now let's take a look at our answer. This is, of course, now the gravitational potential inside a spherical shell. Notice there are no variables. Pi, rho, and g are all constants. B and A are constants. Those are simply the inner and outer radius of the shell. And so therefore, since everything inside here is a constant, that means that it doesn't matter where we are inside that cavity. Anywhere inside that cavity, the gravitational potential will be equal to this amount. Notice that it's negative. All gravitational potentials end up being negative. As you get closer and closer to an object, the value becomes more and more negative. Well, that's a bad way of saying it. The absolute value increases, but it's always a negative value. That's probably a better way to say it. But what's interesting here is that inside the cavity, it's a constant. Outside the cavity, it varies as 1 over r. And so now next, we're going to take a look and see what it's like inside this region right here. What happens to the gravitational potential when we're inside this region? So that would be our next video. And that's how it's done.